Try it again this week, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, Sunday night, the, the Holy Spirit moved and uh, preached a better sermon than I could ever come up with. So we thank God for his presence, and we thank the Lord for this opportunity as well. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. We'll begin reading in the eighth verse. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 8. The Bible says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I need to read that again. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And tonight for a subject, I want to actually borrow the words of a song. Heaven is sounding sweeter all the time. Heaven is sounding sweeter all the time. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need your help. I need your anointing. I need your presence tonight. I can do nothing without you, Lord. But I thank you for all that we have in Christ. I ask that you would anoint the people, anoint them to hear, and anoint me to share what I believe you've laid on my heart. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory. And all of God's people said amen. amen. And amen. Praise God. If there is one word that could sum up Abraham, if I were to encapsulate the story of Abraham's life in one word, it would be the word faith. And Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, faith. And he was obedient to what God called him to do. We don't know much about the origin of Abraham, but we know enough to see the miracle of salvation. Abraham sat in the land of Ur or Ur of the Chaldees. If you don't know how to pronounce it, by the way, you just say every possible way, and the people that know how to pronounce it will realize you got it right, and the rest of you just think I'm smart. And you didn't think you were going to learn anything at church tonight. That's a free one, by the way. All right. But Abraham sat, really, he sat in darkness. He and his family worshipped the pagan idols of the land. They were in darkness. But somehow, some way, the glorious light of the gospel broke through that darkness and came to Abram, who would later be called Abraham. In Galatians chapter 3, if we take it literally, God spoke and preached to Abraham the gospel. But either way, the gospel, God revealed himself to this man, Abram, and he would make with him a phenomenal, a tremendous covenant. Pastor Donnie mentioned some of it this morning, a covenant that would involve a people, a covenant that would involve the land, and most beautifully, a covenant that would involve the coming Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But God would break through that darkness, and he would bring light to Abraham. Can we just pause for a moment? Can we just take a moment right now and think back to when the Lord saved us? Some of you were in, all of us really were in darkness we were in darkness, in sin, but that glorious light from heaven, the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ broke through and saved our souls, and now you are on that way to heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Saved, born again, set free, and on my way to heaven. That's my story. Hallelujah. Some of you were in drugs. Some of you in alcohol. Some of you were just mean. But all of you were in sin, but Jesus Christ saved your soul, lifted you up out of the shadows, and made you a child of God. Mm, hallelujah. 
Maybe some of you hadn't thought for a while back to that moment, that hour that God saved you. But that was the most miraculous moment in the entirety of your life because for all of eternity, you'll remember that moment when Jesus Christ saved your soul and brought you out of darkness and into light. Glory to God. Mm. That may not get you happy, but when I think about my salvation, I get happy. I get glad. That puts a shout in my step. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And God would call Abraham, later called Abraham. He would call him out. He would say, get yourself up, Abraham. Get out of your country. Leave your kindred. Leave your family. Leave it all behind. Leave the idols. Leave it all. And go to a land that I have promised you and prepared for you. Now, he did not know exactly where the Lord was taking him. Once again, faith and obedience. That's really what God is looking for, ladies and gentlemen. When you really get down to it, we, we complicate this thing so much. The Lord is looking for faith to believe him to trust him and obedience. In other words, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Amen? You haven't eaten the Thanksgiving turkey yet. All right. But Abram got up, got out of the land, and went to a place that God had promised him. And think about this. In a moment's time, in a moment's time, the land that was once, the place that was once home to Abraham, his home, was now a strange land to him. And the land that was once a strange land would be his home. Some of you, if you'll think back, you couldn't stand anything to do with God. You hated the Bible. You hated the Lord Jesus Christ. You wanted nothing to do with church. You wanted nothing to do with quote unquote religion. You wanted nothing to do with any of those people talking about us. But now look at you. You are saved. You are born again. You are filled with the Spirit, and you cannot wait to get to church. You cannot wait to read the Bible. You can't wait to praise and worship the Lord. There's been a change in your life. There's been a change. That which was once comfortable to you, that sin that you once enjoyed, the drinking, the drugs, the lifestyle, the gambling, all of that, the religion that you once enjoyed, that you once were in, now you can't stand it. You don't want anything to do with it. There's no psychology that can do that. There's no education that can do that. Only the power of Almighty God can set a person free from the bondages of sin and make them a new creature, a new creation in Christ. Born again, there's really been a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said. Born again and all because of Calvary. Thank God, thank God that you and I have been born again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. And God would bring Abraham and his family to this land, this promised land, the land of Canaan. Incidentally, that's the land that's in dispute right now. There's no question. The questions have been settled and answered. The land is Israel, Jerusalem, the capital, not the divided capital, the undivided capital, Jerusalem, Israel, one state solution. That is the biblical answer to the land dilemma. So, Mr. President, Congress, leaders of the world, you may not care what I have to say, but you'd better care what this book has to say. You'd better care what God has to say. Do not touch his land. Hallelujah. And Abraham as he was a sojourner. His home was now in a place that God had prepared for him, a place that he would journey. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment that you got saved, 
the moment that you gave your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you became a child of God. This world is not your home. This world is not your home. We are just passing through. There is a home in glory that God has prepared for us. That is our eternal home. The Christian should not feel comfortable in the world. The Christian should not feel comfortable with the things of the world. The world should make you uncomfortable, and you should make the world uncomfortable. Have you ever noticed that you can be around a group of coworkers, and one of them will say a joke or a bad word or whatever, and then they'll apologize to you? You're like, what are you apologizing to me for? Because you're a Christian. Because you're a Christian. Because you are a Christian because you are a representative of the kingdom of heaven, because this world is not your home, you're just passing through. Heaven, heaven, heaven is that place. That's where God is. That is where, when you, when you read about what God has prepared, when you read about what God has put together and what he's preparing, Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you. He had to go away so that he could prepare a place for you and for me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He's gone away to prepare a place for us, and if he's gone away to prepare a place for us, he said, I'm coming back to get you, to bring you back to where I am, to the place that I have prepared for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. You know, I was thinking years back when I went to the beautiful country of Uganda in Africa. We were there for about 10 days, and we were at a pastor's conference, and one of the afternoons, they took us out into the countryside to an orphanage. This orphanage had, when at its fullest capacity, I think it was in the thousands of kids of all ages, young children all the way up to teenagers. These children had no parents that they knew of. They had no families. They had no brothers. They had no sisters. They were, by all accounts, most of them, they were abandoned. They were found wandering around on the street, many of them just eating from the garbage, eating from the waste, living in the sewage. And this orphanage, the man heading it up, a minister of the gospel, has a beautiful testimony himself. When we got there, they were so excited, the children were so excited to see us. People coming in from America, it's a big thing. They were practicing and rehearsing for their chapel. They had chapel several times a week. And the gentleman in charge of the orphanage, he said, they're so excited to have y'all that they want to do a special for you. They want to sing some songs. So we're going to show you around. And they toured us around and showed us the facilities as they prepared their songs. And when we walked into that chapel, I've never seen smiles bigger in my life. I'll never forget it because they began to sing. They sang a little bit in their native language and sang in English. As they began to praise and worship. And I looked and, and, and they asked us, they said, would, after they're done singing, would you get up and would you say a few words? And I sat there, I said, Lord, what in the world do I have to say? Here I am coming from the United States of America. We, we, we have more than we know what to do with here. And here are these that they don't have a home, they don't have a family, they don't have anything. But the Lord hit me in the heart, and he said, this is what you say when you get up there. And I stood up and I thanked them for their singing. And I said, most of you, if not all of you here, you don't have an earthly father, but you have a heavenly father. 
You may not have an earthly brother, but you've got a heavenly brother, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, most of you here, all of you here, really, you don't have a home. But right now, your elder brother, Jesus Christ, is building you a mansion in heaven. And if you will love him, serve him, and live for him, one day we will all be at that home in the sky, and we will all be in glory together, and you'll have a mansion and you will be with your heavenly Father, and you will have your brothers and sisters in Christ there for eternity. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't begin to tell you the tears as that truth came forth. The hope that we have in Christ Jesus. You know, there's some times that I will go to pray, and honestly, it feels like the heavens are just brass. The prayers just aren't going anywhere. All of you know what I'm talking about, right? It's just hard to pray. And I have found that whenever I will direct my prayer and my attention to praying for you, for your needs, the share the Bible-thons, the requests that we get, I'm sick, I need healing. My heart is broken. I need a touch from heaven. As I begin to pray and seek God for you, ladies and gentlemen, lift up your needs. I think I can say without fear of contradiction, every single time the Spirit of God will begin to move. As I pray for you, I don't know all of you, of course. I don't know every need, but I know the one who knows the need. And I know the one who has the answer to every need, and his name is Jesus Christ, and he's able to meet the need. This world, it's full of darkness. It's full of sin. It's full of heartache and suffering and pain and sickness. Once again, on the share the slips that we get, the requests that we get, pray for me. My husband, my wife, they passed away. I lost my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister. And I'm hurting because I miss them. Death, the parting that is here in this world. So many that say, I've got cancer, and the doctors have said, I've got only a little time left to live. Others that say, I've got a bondage, I've got an addiction, I've got sin in my life, and it's destroying me. Others that say, my family, my, my children, they're not living for God. They're so far from God, I don't know what I'm going to do. Others that say, I, I have no resources. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. I don't know where the next meal is coming from. I don't know what I'm going to do. This world is full of heartache of sickness, of sorrow, of death. And it is because of sin, ladies and gentlemen. It's not because of a lack of money. It's not because of a lack of education. It is because sin has corrupted and ruined this human race. But thank God that's not where the story ends. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came and he paid the price of sin on Calvary's cross and he redeemed you and redeemed me back to the Father. And now we can have life and life more abundantly. Glory to God. That's the only hope. The only hope for mankind is Jesus Christ. The only hope for you is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. But this world is full of heartache, of sickness, of sorrow. And sometimes I feel like we get overwhelmed with that because it's so real. It's every day. There it is. The wars, the rumors of wars, the unrest, the hatred, the divide, the racism, all that's in this world because of sin. But thank God, that home that land that we're traveling to because this world is not your home, that land eternal, that land called heaven, 
There is no sickness. There is no more sorrow. There is no death. There is no financial issues to worry about. There is no hate in the heart of anyone there. For all that are in heaven are made whole for eternity because of Jesus Christ. Heaven. Heaven. The streets are paved with gold. The walls of jasper. The gates of pearl. The saints are there. The angels are there. All of that is phenomenal, but the greatest part of heaven is that my Savior, my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, He is there. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon His face, the one who saved me by His grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land, what a day, glorious day that's going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a day that's going to be. And that day's coming soon. <laughs> but you know something? Heaven, we've just talked about it. It doesn't have everything, thank God. It doesn't have sickness. There's no death there. There's no parting there. There's no sorrow. But there's something missing in heaven. Something in heaven, there's a void. And that's a void that will be for all eternity. Brother Josh, what are you talking about? Every soul that has died and gone to hell will never enter into that eternal rest of heaven. When you think about that, how awful that hell is. It's not a joke. It's not just a curse word. It's a real place. And there are souls by the millions that are there right now. And they are in eternal torment. And I've got news for you. They're not there because they stole something. They're not there because they murdered someone. They are there because they did not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior because they died in their sin. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now, I know some of you watching tuned into this program, you would say, young man, I don't believe what you've said. I don't believe in this place called heaven that you've spoken about. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in God. Well, I've got a question for you. What do you believe? What do you believe? You would look at me and you'd say, well, on what authority do you say what you've said and where do you get what you've said? Well, that's an easy one, the Bible. Oh, you really believe that book? Well, you read the books of others that have died or that are so old they don't know what's going on and they're just a bunch of their opinions. I would choose to read this book which contains the truth. It is truth. It is life. The Bible is where I get my information. I believe the Bible. I believe the Word of Almighty God. I believe every word that it says. I believe that there is a place called heaven. I believe that there is a place called hell. I believe that you go to heaven by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, and you will be there forever and forever in His presence by accepting Him. I believe it because the Bible tells me that it is so. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can say all day long, well, I don't believe it. But what you are believing, sir, what you are believing, ma'am, is a lie. You can say that there is no God, but you will stand before him one day as your judge. You can stand before him today, and he'll be your savior. And I would pray you would do so. 
But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I want you to grab a hold of this because this world and all that's in it, it's not your home. The sickness, the suffering, the death, the pain, the parting, the war. This morning when Pastor Donnie was describing some of the things that have taken place in Israel as a result of the Hamas, I looked at some of those videos. I wish that I had not. The most awful, horrid things that you can imagine. That is this world. It holds nothing for you. This world has nothing for you. The answer for which you are seeking, it is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Religion cannot save you. Good works cannot save you. You only make it to heaven by faith in Christ. And for the Christian, and you may be here tonight or watching, and you're hurting, you're broken, you're sick in body, your heart has been wounded emotionally, mentally, you've had something take place in your life that has devastated you. You wrestle with it. Some of you have unforgiveness, bitterness. You've lost that loved one, and you're brokenhearted. First of all, I want to remind you that God loves you, and he's still on the throne. That hasn't changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And tonight, I, 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 as much as preachers love to shout and have everybody shouting with them, Tonight, I feel in my heart, I felt in my heart, I've really felt it all week, that in this service, the Lord just wants you as a simple reminder to know that the Word of God tells us that at the end of the story, He's going to wipe away every tear, every bit of sorrow, and it will be joy unspeakable full of glory, and the half has never yet been told. Heaven, as I look at this world, as I look at this earth, and what's happening, heaven is sounding sweeter all the time. And the Lord's coming back soon for his church. He told us he's coming back soon. But until he does, we must do all that we can. Now, hear me, please. We must do all that we can to preach this gospel. Well, Brother Josh, I'm not a preacher. Oh, wait a minute now. He's given you the best message you could ever preach. The best message you could ever preach is stop and let me tell you what the good Lord has done for me. Tell him how God saved you. Tell him how Jesus delivered you. Tell him how he filled you with the Holy Ghost. Tell them how he's healed you. Tell them what God has done in your life. We must be about the Lord's business. When I think about it in heaven, I thought a lot lately about my grandmother, my dad's mom. Her name was Marie. She's going on to be with the Lord, of course, now, and you've heard us talk about her many times. She had a beautiful French accent. When she would get fired up, the French accent would really get tuned up. She'd let you know what she thought, too. She wouldn't pull any punches. If, if, you, if you were just off base, she would tell you, and I love that. <laughs> but I was thinking how for years, she, she, my grandfather was born and raised in Berlin, Germany, and as a teenager, you've heard us tell this, he would, this was during the time of the Third Reich coming to power. And he and the family had to escape Germany because of Nazi oppression. And as I understand the story, if they had not gotten out in the time that they did, my grandfather, he was on the list, the 
Nazis were coming to take him to go probably to a concentration camp. They'd bring them for questioning, but then you'd never see him again. And they were able to charter a plane and get out just at the last moments. They, they had some wealth. They lost all of it. The Germans destroyed all the records in Kristallnacht. I believe it was November the 9th. All the records destroyed, but they kept their lives, thank God. My grandfather would ultimately come to America. Then he would go back and he would fight and serve in battle in the army. He knew what it was to lose everything. He knew what it was to see war, to see battle, to see death. He knew what it was to experience a hatred that was so strong that you literally had a group of people who wanted you dead. Not just gone, but in prison, but dead, destroyed, annihilated. And God, help us, we have that same spirit in this country today, and you need to be praying and taking authority over that in the name of Jesus. It's of the devil. My grandmother was from France, a little town called Nancy. And she, meeting my grandfather, they, they, they did not have a lot as far as physical means, material things in their lives. They had some challenges. One of them's name is John. She'd be the first one to tell you. She'd tell me all the time. She'd say, Joshua, let me tell you, your dad, that fellow, he was something. <laughs> but one day, Jesus Christ came into my family's hearts and lives, penetrated that darkness. And my grandfather, my grandmother, my dad, my uncles, my aunts, all gave their hearts to Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And my grandfather, who was a Jew from Germany, escaped the Nazis, dealing with all of that which was in his heart and in his life, wanting really nothing to do for a period of time with God because he'd say, I don't want much to do with a God who would allow this to happen to my people. But one day, he read the Bible, and he said, I can't argue it anymore. I have come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is Lord, and he gave his heart and life to Christ, and a change happened. They're waiting right now for me in glory. There's a table that's spread, and they're waiting for us, ladies and gentlemen. No more sorrow. No more sickness, no more parting. But for right now, the needs that you have, whatever they might be, as the singers, musicians make their way back, we're going to take a few moments and we're going to bind our faith together and believe God for you. We're going to that city where the Lamb is the light. There's no need for a sun or for a moon there because the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb, He's the light. But for now, here, every need that you have, it can be met in the name of Jesus. And even when we get to glory one day, those crowns of righteousness that we'll receive, we're going to cast them at His feet. I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I want everyone to stand in this place. Please, everyone standing. And if you'd say, Brother Josh, I'm broken in my heart. I'm sick in my body. I need a touch. Remember this, heaven is sounding sweeter all the time, and God is able to meet your need. And if you need to get saved and make heaven your home, it can happen in a moment's time. If you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. But I want us to lift our hands. I want us to slip up our hands. And whatever that need is, let's believe God right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for Calvary. 
We thank you that at the cross, eternal life was purchased and heaven is our home. I pray for the needs of the people, Lord. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would heal those who need a physical touch. I'm asking, Lord, that you would reach down and bring conviction, Holy Spirit conviction, on those that have unsaved loved ones, that you would touch them, that their hearts would be soft towards the things of God, and they would say yes to Christ. Lord, for those that they're lonely, they're hurting and they're broken, they've lost a loved one, I'm asking, Lord, that you'd wrap your arms of love around them right now, that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would move in their hearts in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you because everything we have, everything that we have has come by the way of the cross. And we take this time now to worship you, Lord, and to receive of you and thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name we say it, amen. And amen. Just worship the Lord and thank him. Praise God. Oh, there is coming the day when no heartache shall come on. No more clouds in the sky. Just slip up your hands right now and let's just no worship him for a moment. To dim the eye. All is peace. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden that shore. Happy golden shore. What a day. Oh, what a day. Glorious day that will be. Come on, church, yeah. let's sing it now. What a day that will what be. What a day. enjoy that this evening thank you josh for that we appreciate it very much turn around tell your neighbor you love them be back with us wednesday night for our midweek bible study we love you god bless you oh well, jesus i'll never forget what you've done
We hope you were blessed and enjoyed this live service from Family Worship Center. Family Worship Center, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, holds three services weekly, Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m., and Wednesday at 7 p.m., all Central Time. All services are broadcast live on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network, Sun Life Radio, online at sunlifetv.com, and on the free SBN Now app. To join the Family Worship Center Media Church, call 1-800-288-8350 or join at jsm.org. Live services are produced by the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.